Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest for this Halloween evening having a look at the live radar, the weather warnings, we do have yellow rain and wind warnings in force tonight and tomorrow and then we'll also have a look at the long term outlook as we head into November with it looking like it's going to be really quite cold start over the next week beyond that things are looking a little bit more westerly but towards the middle of the month there is a lot of uncertainty um, as subtle changes in the jet stream could be sending us very cold or we could be continuing mild uh, and westerly. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow on Twitter as well at the links in the description. As you can see at the moment we've got a big low pressure um, sitting over the top of us. The big trough that has given us some very very heavy rain over the course of the last 24-36 hours. We saw very heavy rain moving from the east with a squall line um, early this morning and for some in the east even into around lunchtime. And that is moving out in the North Sea, starting to impact Denmark, Netherlands, and the centre of the low is starting to impact parts of Scotland once again with very heavy rain there. And this low pressure is going to slowly sink southwards and eastwards. So all this rain is going to be coming back in over the course of this evening. You can see there are some very heavy showers, squally showers coming in on a very brisk westerly wind. So for some out there this evening, it is going to be pretty miserable. As you can see, there was a line of very heavy, squally rain moving through northwest England, through Wales, and that's going to be progressing eastwards. It is moving relatively slowly in terms of it just spiralling around the low. So you could be stuck under this for a good hour or two, even though it is a relatively thin line of rain. Um, elsewhere, still a lot of showers. The best place really is in the east. Um and sort of the East Midlands and East Anglia, because um, in the south we've got some showers moving up from the channel, um, and in the southwest as well, and then of course we've got these heavier bands of rain moving in um, in from Ireland and from the Irish Sea, so it could be quite a miserable night of trick-or-treating or going out, whatever you are doing this evening, so do do address accordingly, even if you are in fancy dress, do make sure you take an umbrella or a coat or whatever, because um, it could be miserable out there at times. If we do have a look at the weather warnings, you can see we have multiple warnings in at the moment. We have a wind warning across the west for squally winds, and we'll have a look at that. You can see high winds from midday today uh, until 11pm tonight, so we've still got a good few hours, of course, from this. Severe gales, 50 to 60 miles per hour, quite widely, perhaps 70 miles an hour in a few spots. We have a yellow warning for the north, we had a look at this, 3am today until 6am tomorrow, so lasting overnight tonight. Again, very heavy rain. Um, a good few hours of rain, 20, 30 millimetres, and of course there could be some trouble with wind mixing to that, localised flooding, and because of the heavy rainfall we've had recently, there could be some flooding issues. Then we have two warnings across Scotland. Yellow rain warning from 3pm today until 12 tomorrow, high impact, low likelihood, 40 to 60 millimetres, and that's because of that weather front that is spiring and, and sort of sitting over Scotland as we saw on the live radar. And then we also have the one across Aberdeenshire, and that's because of that very heavy rain um, around that centre of the low that impacted many areas in sort of the Midlands and the east this morning is now spreading through and sitting over Scotland as this low eventually sort of moves away over the next day or so. And you can kind of see from 10am today until midnight, um, again, 40 to 50 millimetres is possible over some areas, high impact, low likelihood. So there could be some impacts over the next 24 hours. So do make sure you keep an eye on these warnings. And if you are going out doing anything this evening, there could be some disruption, could be some heavy rain and strong winds around. So do take a care um, out there tonight. So we do now, do now have a look through the GFS. You can see the big trough of low pressure sitting over the top of the UK at the moment. That's bringing all the heavy rain and the winds. That will clear out into the North Sea. And then we go into a direct northerly with quite cold air sinking southwards. Potentially for a bit of snow, potentially, um, or maybe over the tops of the Scottish hills. Elsewhere, just chillier conditions, maybe an overnight frost here or there. But eventually, milder air does put, put push in for next weekend, and we do go a bit more westerly. But we still have some colder air, especially over Scotland. And you can't rule out a bit of snow, maybe, um, falling into some of the weather fronts as they come into colder air. Beyond that, it does go mainly westerly. Now, it's not going to be warm all the time. It is a shifted southwards jet stream, so we do have colder air to the north. But right towards the end of the run, we go really quite chilly indeed, with... A northerly wind, quite cold, really. Um, and right towards the end of the run, we're sort of seeing low pressure trying to push that away. But the GFS does go pretty chilly 
for the middle of November with a direct northerly. So very interesting seeing that. And again, this is cropping up on the models and the ensembles over the last few days. We're seeing the potential for this big amplification, similar to what we're going to be seeing over the next few days. But remember, this is two weeks on. So that air to our north is a degree or two colder. There is more of cold, more colder air to our north because, of course, the cold pool over the North Pole is expanding quite rapidly now before it peaks in sort of January time. So we're getting every day, we're getting more and more cold air over the North Pole. So these northerlies, sort of every day or every week we go on, are just going to get even colder before they peak in January. Um, so it does look like this could be a chilly northerly wind. If we do have a look at the temperature deviation, you can see quite cold air, a good two, four, six degrees below average um, at times. Very chilly indeed, and of course we have to keep an eye really what happens with this. Again, it is in the extended range, so it is probably an outlier. We'll have a look at the GFS at the end of the video, uh, GFS ensembles at the end of the video, but we can't rule it out. So if we do now have a look at the GM, now it only goes out to 156 hours on this latest run, um, as it probably take another hour or two until we get all of it, but we'll run out to 156 hours, and you can see generally quite westerly. If we go have a look at the midnight run to run it on beyond that, you can see get similar westerly, and we are seeing application. You can see towards day 10, we see some high pressure building up towards northern Canada. Now, if we did run this on, I wouldn't be surprised to see this low sort of sink into the UK, into Europe initially, turning things quite wet, uh, westerly, uh, unsettled and stormy, but on the back edge, you can see there was a lot of cold air, so that could be happening if we did run on this GM another couple of days. But again, longer term, so we're all going to keep an eye on really what happens with this application, um, and we'll have to keep an eye on the next few days to see if this signal of seeing this high pressure building up towards northern Canada, towards the middle of the month, and towards Greenland, is coming off or whether it's just within a few outlier runs because we've seen it now on the gfs we're seeing it a little bit on this gem as well a very interesting pattern seeing that and of course it could send us quite cold if we did see sort of a green and high building in if we do have a look at the east mwf you can see again Low pressure around at the moment, then the northerly wind pushes in, and then we go mainly westerly. But you can see it is pretty blocked towards day 10. Although there is a lot of low pressure around, you can see it is very patchy in terms of the blues, um, which is showing um, sort of the height of the pressure level. Um, and you can see, generally, things are... Yeah, things are quite blocked out in the North Atlantic. You can see the very purple colours, which is the very deep low pressures, are much further northwards, and we have a lot more higher pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic. And if we did see this high pressure sort of maintain, we would see this cold air slowly sink southwards as these lows do clear. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye really what happens with that. But again, showing a bit of blocked weather out in the North Atlantic on this latest ECM WF. Interesting signs again for the middle of November. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles, we can only have a look at the 6Z run, as the 12Z hasn't quite come out yet. Um, and you can see on the 6Z, the operational run was a warm outlier. You can see over the next week, very, very chilly, if not quite cold. Beyond that, temperatures return to average. Some precipitation, but not masses, as there is a bit of uncertainty on how deep these low pressures are going to be. And especially in the south, um, there could be high pressure trying to push up from the south as well, maybe sending things a little bit drier um, in sort of England. You can see, though, there is a lot of scatter, some going very mild, others going quite cold. And it is the the mean is sort of sitting around the sort of 1981-2010 mean. Um, so we can't really take too much from that. And, of course, having a look at the latest GFS, it goes quite cold um, in the longer term. And, again, um, it is really all up in the air from the 7th, 8th of November onwards. But hopefully um, things will be resolved in the next few days days um, in terms of what we're going to see around 8th, 9th, 10th of November. At this stage, I'll probably say it's going to be turning westerly at least for a period of time, especially um, turning milder in the south, maybe staying cold in the north with the jet stream shifted a bit further southwards. But beyond that, um, there is the potential, of course, seeing that GFS run of things turning colder from the north. If we do have a look at Glasgow, you can see again, similar over the next week with quite cold temperatures peaking at around minus 4, minus 5 at 150 HPA. Could be a bit of snow here or there, a few uh, a few places, especially over the hills, and could be some overnight frost. A lot of precipitation around at the moment, but throughout this week it should be turning a little bit dry with a cooler air mass from the north, but of course a colder air mass is a drier air mass, so, so there'll be less moisture, less showers, um, and less just rain in general. Beyond that, temperatures are a bit more up and down with westerly conditions, looking likely around 7th, 8th November, but there are a lot of ensemble members going quite cold, 
similarly, others going quite mild, and again, it's all very uncertain. A lot of low pressure around, so no massive high pressure signal, at least further northwards. Um, but yeah, things are looking interesting for the middle of November. And of course, if you haven't had watched my winter updates, I have always said um, November and early December is probably our best chances, or at least those above average chances this year of seeing something colder simply because of the longer term trends. So it wouldn't be too abnormal to be seeing some northerly plunges towards the middle or end of November. And we've got to keep an eye on that. So we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run. We'll go through precipitation and then we'll have a look at temperatures you can see at the moment. Um, we can see a lot of showers pushing in from the west, especially in the west and the north. A lot of rain tonight um, if you are trick-or-treating. Best place, as I said, is probably in the east and the southeast. But because of clearer skies, there could be some temperatures could fall to around 5, 6, 7 degrees. So it could be quite chilly. Beyond that, the showers will clear slowly eastwards throughout tomorrow morning, turning drier um, eventually um, for many areas. Um, for many areas by sort of Monday afternoon um, into the evening with a few showers around, but nothing too major. Beyond that, for a Tuesday, there could be a, a, a few scattered showers around, but nothing too major. And Thursday looks a pretty dry day, really, in general. Not too many showers around, maybe just along the east coast. Beyond that, though, by Friday, we're starting to push in some more cloud, potentially Weather fronts uh, moving back in. Weak weather fronts nonetheless, but weather fronts, and that could bring some thicker cloud and some patchy rain towards Scotland. Now, if we do have a look at the max temperatures, you can see at the moment, temperatures this evening, maybe sort of 10, 11 degrees, but falling away quite quickly. So around sort of midnight tonight, we could be seeing 6, 7, 8, 9 degrees. Not, many too, not, too, not too many places are in double digits. Beyond that, early tomorrow morning, again, 7, 8 degrees, widely. And Monday afternoon, looking only 10, 11, 12 degrees, so pretty chilly. Overnight Tuesday could be like 3, 4, 5 degrees, potentially, with the colder air mass. And in the day on Tuesday, struggling around 9, 10 degrees, maybe 11 in a few spots. And by Wednesday, again, 9, 10 degrees, a lot cold across Scotland, maybe only 2, 3, 4 degrees. And then by Thursday afternoon, again, 9, 10 degrees potentially. But it does look like some milder air is starting to push in from the west. But early, early hours of Friday, with a lot of the, with cold air sitting above us for a good few days, we could be seeing first sort of widespread frost across England and Wales. As you can see across the Midlands, Wales, parts of the southwest, temperatures dropping around to around 1, 2 degrees, if not freezing. So looking quite cold there. So things are looking really interesting through the start of November. We've got a lot of comic going on over the next 24 hours. Do you stay safe out there if you are trick or treating? As there could be some squally rain and strong winds around, and then it is turning colder for the first week of November. Beyond that, it does look like there are signals for it to turn westerly. But then once again, for the middle of November, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, it could things be, could be turning colder once again, as we saw on that GFS run. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.